Anyone who has seen my other videos knows I love a bit of time bending and that my mid-century pattern collection is an attractive nuisance. Lately, I've been seeing this pattern in my dreams, except it's a Renaissance petticoat. This pattern is a sheath dress with a tie-on overskirt and a short jacket. I'm mostly interested in the classic mid-20th century neckline of this pattern, and how that would look with some details from the 16th century. I have some ideas for the jacket, but that needs some deeper thought, so not today. I cut the dress pattern off at the waist, or where the waist would be in the early 16th century, to turn the silhouette into a skirted gown rather than a sheath. I eliminated the bust dart using a similar technique to that I used in the medieval core video. But during the mock-up process, I ended up adding a dart at the arm side to help the sleeve sit nicely on the very edge of the shoulder. I also shifted the side seam backwards so that it creates that iconic 16th century V at the back of the bodice. I will add closures to these seams a la Renaissance. I apologize for this lining. I physically started but never mentally committed to do a historical lining, and I fully admit a modern bag lining would have been less complicated. Hindsight, folks. Hindsight. Anyway, I treated the dart lining relationship like I would if I were flat lining the bodice, basting the legs of the dart first and treating it as one layer of fabric. This is velveteen and has a beautiful pile, and thus cannot be pressed lest the pile be crushed and we end up with crushed velvet. <laughs> there are many methods for sewing and pressing velvet, but I found I needed none of them for this project. The velvet sewed perfectly smoothly, no shifting, and all I needed was a nice finger press on the seams. I pressed the shoulder seam open, turned each side under, and hand felled the fold to enclose the raw edge. I quickly realized that the modern pattern with its dart didn't want to be turned in and fell stitched in the historical way, so I whipped up a facing out of the lining cotton. Bit bulky at the seams, but not too too bad. A grosgrain ribbon gives the closure edge more stability, finishes off the raw edge, and most importantly, I like the look. I 
used this technique in my Gamora embroidery video. It is actually vaguely historical as I got the idea from a set of 18th century stays. I love all embroidery, but functional embroidery has a special place in my heart. I cut the skirt along the selvage and made sure that each seam had one selvage edge and one raw edge so that I can fold the selvage over the raw edge in a rather lazy flat felt seam. In theory, keeping one edge on the straight grain and the other on the bias for each skirt seam will keep the seams from stretching, but I noticed some bubbling on the bias side of my skirt panels, so I'll probably stick to matching up the grain lines on my seams in the future. There are three skirt panels, one that will be attached to the back of the bodice, and two for the front. This means I'll have a center front seam on my skirt, which I was upset about for a minute, but honestly it turned out fine. I left a 3 inch slit open at the top of each side back seam, which will attach to those side back seams of the bodice, so that the skirt will go over my shoulders. I sewed two gathering lines along the back panel and double front panel and gathered the skirt waist down to match the corresponding bodice pieces. I left about 12 inches at the center front flat and ungathered. Not for any historical reason, just something I played around with and liked. I sewed the gathers of the skirt to the bodice, right sides together. Another grow grain ribbon covers the raw waist edge on the inside of the bodice. I cut a hem facing out of some leftover shot silk file. It's a gold slash amber weave and will be a striking accent whenever it flashes. I then sewed the bottom edge to the velvet right sides together, flipped them right side out, and finger pressed a 3 16 inch lip of velvet to the inside. To keep this nice and crisp, I prick stitched at 1 quarter inch from the hem edge, only catching a thread or two from each the inside and outside fabric. This took approximately 600 years. I whip stitched the bound edge to the inside of the skirt, again only catching a thread or two of the velvet. I love a good aglet, and I also love the obvious historical nod to what is looking like a pretty modern cocktail dress. Sort of cocktail on the way to a feast. I have to say, for an impulse distraction project, this is probably my favorite thing I've made. I've been struggling to incorporate my historical interests into my very modern wardrobe, and this is the first time I feel like I hit a good balance. I could wax poetic about how we're programmed to homogenize our interests, and it takes some time to relearn trusting our instincts, but I'm just going to take the win. If you like Italian Renaissance costuming or modern sewing or a combination of the two, hit subscribe. I am in the midst of a multi-garment project from the early 1500s, so more videos from that ensemble are on the way and definitely more modern historicism. Until next time, I bid you adieu.